Yo, what it do is your boy be smooth. It sounds weird to say, but we're in a different format. My boy is back at it again to my, wait, no, on this side now. Jags to riches. We are here with Trust the Podcast. You're talking about NBA sports. Obviously bringing up my Boston Celtics, but obviously my co-host, my boy Jags. What are you doing? Living the dream, Bobby. Living the dream. How are you, sir? Be smooth. First, before we even get started, I didn't mention this yet. Congratulations on hitting the 6,600 on YouTube, yeah. brother. Well earned, well deserved. I think you're Appreciate at 60.1 that. now, but yeah. um, congrats, man. Doing, feeling Appreciate great, man. man. You know, I, I tell people this all the time. I actually had a buddy hit me up. I haven't talked to him in years. He was like, Bobby, if you took YouTube seriously, you'd be at like 50K subs. I tell people this every time. YouTube for me has been a joy. It's just to be creative to talk to people and even talk to some of the comments and the trolls we get like last night's video. We're going to get to that very, very shortly. But first, let's kick this off. We do have a sponsor. Shout out to SeatGeek. You guys can get, obviously, NBA seasons here. Baseball's coming around the corner. I saw the World Series pre-order tickets. They're very expensive. You can get 20 bucks off your first order using promo code BSMOOTH at checkout. SeatGeek.com. Check it out. Link will be in the description. Help your boy out. Help yourself out. Help the whole podcast out. We're trying to get this thing up and in prime time. Check out promo code BSmooth at checkout. Now, I don't know about my boy Chad. Shout out to homeboy. I woke up early this morning, five o'clock, thinking, you know what? How am I going to start my day? Responding to trolls is the best answer I had. Responding to comments, going back and forth. And I made a 75th anniversary video. Obviously, you've probably seen it by now. If not, again, hit on the channel. I made a video responding to the thing that TNT, ESPN collaborated. And now, obviously, I'm going to preface this with this. I did not realize, and I don't know Jax did that the 50th anniversary players are on the 75th anniversary play. I did not know. I thought it was a different list. I thought it was just 75 new players. But it was the exact same 50 and adding 25. Plus 25, that, yeah. That would have changed my perception on the list if I would have known that. Right. Because <clears throat> then it's just adding 25 players. Basically, take the old list. Here's my 50, add 25. It's yeah. completely different. I'm with you. So I wish I would have known that before making the video. And again, I didn't know till. Probably this morning. I figured out some people were like, yo, Bobby, this is what I saw on ESPN. This is what they said. So I wish I would have seen that. But regardless, most of my points still stand. Yeah. I still believe Kyrie is just a better player. Now, let's talk about this. Let's preface this. Now, Jags, I hit you up. You've seen the video. What are your thoughts on just the list in general about having these, no offense, these 50 players from 1950s and 60s? I don't know. All right. So <clears throat> just to kind of go over the list all together. So... First off, I want to shout out my Celtics getting 20 total members into that list, second behind the 18 Lakers. By the way, they have four current players on that list. Go figure. Um, so when it comes to these kind of lists, guys, it, for me, it's very difficult to even get into this. It's All it's about is to cause a conversation and controversy. Why do I say that? Because things change. I mean, how can we you know, compare something from 50 years ago to now when you're talking about change, you're talking about the players are different. You know, if a seven foot player was dribbling down the court and shooting three pointers back, you know, then they would be on the bench, you know, seven footers pretty much pay, played center. They didn't want point guards like in today's NBA. The players back then didn't have the medicine, the training that the NBA players, the recovery that they have today, the diet, just everything that is advanced today. What about the game itself? You know, um, shot clock error you know 20 years ago it was a 30 seconds opposed to 24 so a lot of things have changed so it's kind of hard to say well this player is better than that player and i'm upset this player is not on it but with that being said i mean you want to talk some snubs a lot of your comments it seemed to be centered mainly around Kyrie, and i will address him but to me there are some big snubs when it comes to like for me tracy mcgrady you know, Vince Carter, Dwight Howard, uh, Matumbo. Those are people like from my era generation growing up and that I feel that should actually been on it. So when you talk about Kyrie, who are you taking off to put him on there? Would you say Westbrook? Would you say Dame? I mean, and why are you putting him on there? And then I'll actually, you know, rebuttal to that. So yes, uh, so again, obviously people don't realize this. None of my videos are scripted. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna say till the video is recorded. So Likewise. people it's all like freestyle. <laughs> freestyle, and that's my style. That's how I've done this. That's how I've grown this platform that I have. Now, I will say this. Now that we know it's the 25 players added, now that makes it a little more difficult. Now I can see why Kyrie might've gotten left out. Right. Why Clay Thompson might've got left out. Why a guy like Dwight Howard, doesn't make any sense, got left out. Yeah. 
So I can see those guys, for example. Now you're picking and choosing is Howard over Rodman. That's right. tough. Now, for me, I like Westbrook. The big one is obviously Dame. And a lot yes. of people going back and forth. And it's funny to me because I've never heard this conversation before. I've always heard some people say maybe Steph a little better than Kyrie. Or excuse me, backwards. I think Steph people think Kyrie's a little better than Steph. Mm -hmm. But I think most majority of NBA fans think Curry's a little better. Right. I have never heard this conversation of Dame being better than Kyrie. I've never heard this. I'm sorry. At right. their best, Kyrie Irving is a guy that led his team, not led his team, was a sidekick to a guy that led his team to a championship. Right. He hit the clutchest shot of all time. People are like, Bob, you don't know what great means. You cannot tell the history of basketball without talking about LeBron James. And if you talk about LeBron James, you talk about the Cavs 2016. You can't talk about that team without the guy who won the game for them, which is Kyrie Irving. So Fair. I would take Dame out. People are like, oh, well, Kyrie's never led his team to the playoffs. Okay, Dame went to one Western Conference Finals and gets bounced in the first round pretty much religiously. So I don't know. Right. Well, all right, so a few things I'll respond to is, you know, first, I, I don't disagree with you. I don't think Dame should be on the list. And I'm a Dame lover. I love me some Dame time. I mean, how can you not? I mean, who yeah. doesn't? Um, <clears throat> as far as this, though, I will say, Dame, you agree, would you agree he's a top 10 player in the league today? And that's close. Somewhere in the top. Uh, so, definitely not... top 13, but yeah, that's close. Is Kyrie? Yeah. See, I have Dame probably in the top 10 and Kyrie just outside of it. So to me, I put Dame a little bit above him because when you talk about championships and greatness and, you know, sidekicks, you can talk about winning it. I could cite Robert Horry hitting a big shot to win the Lakers beating the Kings when it was Kobe and Shaq carrying them, you know, and that's just a shot. But at the same time, Kyrie, you're basing it off of championships. Well, then what about Clay Thompson, who has multiple championships? Are we talking about feats? Well, what about Clay Thompson, who scored 60 and three quarters or 37 and a quarter? Are we talking about statistics? What about in 2002 when Tracy McGrady averaged 33 points, seven rebounds, six assists? You know what I'm saying? It's all over the place, bro. So it's subjective. It's one of those things where I'm with you. I'm taking Dame out, but it's not for Kyrie. Um, let me preface this by saying I am a Celtics fan. I do not like Kyrie Irving. So that might sway my, you know, <laughs> and I'm just putting that out there. But to me, you take Dame off, man. There's other guys, like I said, the Dwight's, the T-Max, the Vince Carters. I mean, I've heard Tony Parker's. There's several people that deserve it. But you asked why Dame. I think that it's because of what Dame represents. He is the heart and soul of Portland who's refused to leave, who's given everything to that place. Just hear me out. And, and, and this is, I'm just saying, this is what everyone's saying. The same okay. reason they love Giannis. He took mm -hmm. the big contract, stayed with his hometown that drafted him. He's given everything to them. Whereas you got Kyrie, who's been a diva everywhere he goes. Look what he's doing right now. And he's just, that's why people feel that way. You know, they're going to sway towards Dame, regardless mm. of skill. You know what I mean? But in a vacuum, if Kyrie wasn't absolutely crazy, I'm taking it. I would take Kyrie. If Kyrie was built like Dame, if it was the same person with their, their skill sets, I'd take Kyrie all day. Because what he can do on a basketball court is almost second to none, you know? You know... It's funny. And again, <clears throat> I think the majority of, excuse me, I think the majority of the comments I saw on YouTube were really Ooh. pushing back of saying, oh, Bobby, you don't know basketball. And people didn't like the analogy I use of 2K. Now, 2K, again, <laughs> uh, obviously, Jag's a little older than I am, but we're on the same age group. 2K is a great way to learn, especially for people around my age, learn the older players. Why? Because I would have never heard of Bob Pettit. I live in Georgia. There's not a Bob Pettit uh, mural, not a statue. I would never know who Bob Pettit was unless it was for 2K. Same for a lot of people my age. People right. are like, well, Bob, you should look up these players. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. This is black and white video from 1960s and 70s. Why would someone living in 2021 watch that when there's players today that are just playing better? And right. I think people just don't like that point. Now, I'm not mad about, you know, the Clay Thompson, the Dwight Howards over Kyrie. I can live with that. I'm, I'm cool yeah. with that. I'm actually not mad at that. For me, again, talking about the video specifically, it was, why is, what was that dude's name? Dolph Shales over Kyrie Irving. Again, not knowing <laughs> that he was on the original team. Not knowing Rick Arzine on the list. Who are these dudes? And right. again, people are like, Bobby, you don't know between skill and greatness. Okay, cool. 
Tell me why a guy averaged 17 points a game, but he's considered great. Right. Tell me why yeah. a guy, and again, I'm a Celtics fan myself, Sam Jones is a solid player. He won, yeah. I think it's what, nine, ten championships? Celtics bro, legend, man. Yeah. The eight teams in the league, bro. I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm a Lakers fan because Lakers fans have that same argument. Yeah. Celtics yeah. have won how many titles in the modern era? Yep. Four? You yep. have three. I don't know if you call Larry Bird modern, but you have three with Larry Bird <laughs> and one in 2008. Four titles. How many have they won since 1980? Uh, probably 10. If not, 10 is probably a short number. That, right. There's just levels to this. And again, a lot of those titles were won. My dad was born in 1963. Yeah. Bro, Rick Orson was playing in 1955, <laughs> bro. So right. it just shows the level of it. And I use this one example, and I'm going to pass it off. People are like, Bobby, just because players play today don't mean they're better. Yes, they do. 100%, just like medicine gets better in 70 years. Just like right. movies, cars, iPhones, everything gets better through time. <clears throat> so course. why would players, you know, that played in such a long time ago, that smoked cigarettes for breakfast, that had yeah. their liquor before the games, that, again, that was just what they did back then. There's right. better medicine now. Of course, they'd be better. And that's like kind of what my whole point was at the very beginning. It's like, you really can't properly measure this. You know what I mean? Of course, you know, they're going to advance in time. I mean, it's natural. I mean, these are guys are doing things today that they wouldn't have dreamed of back then. Dream. Magic Johnson became, you know, the first, you know, hybrid point guard that was, you know. So it's just different milestones over the years. These kind of things are just to stir up some debates and some controversy, which you got to love, you know, to give us something to talk about. But um, everything you said, I agree with, man. It's all who you want, who you prefer. And I would listen to an argument for just about anyone, as long as you're not coming out with no silliness. You know, I, I could understand a perspective of every single one of those players. Yeah, 100%. La last thing we'll talk about the 75th and we'll move on here. I, I saw one person say, They'd rather have Pistol Pete over Kyrie. If we're going to talk about greatness, I give it to you. Nostalgia, I'll give it to you. No one's telling me if you're a GM in today's game, you're drafting Pistol Pete over Kyrie Irving. I'm sorry. Right. It, it kind of I'm goes sorry. back to that, how do you measure greatness? You know what yeah. I mean? So that's another thing. That person you're talking to might be 50 years old and, you yeah. know, came up in this era. It's the same thing. Why? It'll be the same thing, you know, 50 years from now. It's the players of yesteryear. They, they couldn't keep up, you know, and then, you know, 50 years from now, it's all oh, they couldn't do, you know. So it's that classic argument, guy, you know, and it will Those always games. be that classic argument. Yeah. I love that. It will never end. But next up, Celtics Knicks recap. Oof. Boy, I'll tell you. Now, Ooh. shout out to everyone that joined the live stream. The live stream is, is absolutely pumping the entire time. But it was funny always having a group of different fans come together. Mm -hmm. The Celtics fans, the Knicks fans, the trolls at the end, oh. people telling me to turn off the camera. It, uh, <laughs> people said I had tears in my eyes. It was a rough night for me. Yep. But however, I think that was an awesome way to kick off the NBA season Man. for both teams, for Man. Madison Square Garden to be bumping, oh. for the stars oh. to be in attendance, and for even though a star of the game that didn't play like a star in Tatum, that the co-star somewhat, Jalen Brown, was going off. So yes. what were your thoughts about the game? I mean, what would you take about it? Bobby, like, it, it's something magnificent when you can sit on a couch in the middle of the night, you know, in your pajamas and start sweating and your pulse is elevating and it's like, and it's like your shortness of breath because of how exciting this game is. Like, I was anxious watching it as a Celtics fan. I can imagine yeah. the Knicks were the same way. Absolute thriller, double overtime, instant classic. And I would not be surprised if when the year is done, we look back and we're still talking about that as potentially the game of the year. It's not one of the best. I mean, it, it really was to, you know, open up a, um, a tip off night and to do that, I, I believe it, it's absolutely sensational, but at least our Celtics are staying consistent because they pretty much did that the entire preseason with the buzzer beaters and the losing yeah. by one and the winning by one. So, um, I thought it was an incredible game, like you said. I thought, um, you know, for both teams, a lot of takeaways, like you said. You got to start with Jalen Brown and his historic career night. Just everything he did was just beautiful. I mean, absolute. For the fact that the man came off of a week of, you know, COVID and just came in like that, it was sensational. And then, you know, Tatum struggled. Still had 20 and 11, but to shoot seven for 30 is and two awful. for 15 is it's sad. But the silver lining is if you are going to the f double overtime to, with a fourth seeded, you know, team with playoff, deep playoff aspirations with your star player shooting a historically bad night, you know, that's that's something to really look at. Um, otherwise, Rob, Romeo, I love what I've seen. 
Like, you well, know, you know, no Jay Rich, no Al Horford. You know that may have swayed things because Julius Randle de- destroyed us with Grant. So I would have liked to see Al there. But like you said, man, I loved it. It was great for both teams, and um, what an exciting way to start the season. Yeah, I would say I've already talked a lot about the game. I, I want to talk more outside of what truly happened and see if mm-hmm. I can get your take on it. Mm-hmm. I was just confused at the lineups of why certain players didn't play. Now I get it. And again, I had a lot of Knicks Six fans telling me, you know, Bobby, oh my Lord, we destroyed you. RJ Barrett, the clamp God, was shutting down Tatum. Tatum is wide open shots the entire damn night. That was not yeah. no damn RJ Barrett. That was right. Tatum just missing. Yeah, but my confusion is, I get Richardson's out early. That was kind of a shock with the migraine. I've had migraines before. I'm not going to blame homie. Someone said he sat out a game where he's going to get millions for a headache. It, okay, no, don't think it's not like a that. headache. <laughs> it, migraines are deep things. Al Horford still not going to be back. Probably not going to miss. He's going to miss tonight, tonight's game as well, I'm pretty sure. He's questionable, so we'll, hopefully we get him back. My thing is this. I don't understand why he didn't play Juan Hernan Gomez. Mm-hmm. I don't get why he didn't. Ennis Kenner didn't get a minute off the no. bat. I don't understand. That's the part that confused me. We're getting destroyed on the inside. Grant Williams actually had a decent game. He carried us. I think that was that fourth quarter. He had nine points. He played well. He, he had a really okay, good game. Okay, I think he was shot six for nine. Yeah. Um, he ended he up having 30. 15. He had 15, five, and four. He was three for five from three, but it was just yeah. defensively. He was getting destroyed by Julius Randle, which obviously is Julius yeah. Randle. Randle's, Randle's sure. Randle's an all-star. Randle's actually on my fantasy team. So shout out to Julius Randle for getting me some points. But I think the weird part is, again, just by Grant Williams, he's such a big, strong guy. It looked like he didn't have any strength, had no rocks in his back pocket. He was getting back down religiously. I know Randall's a big dude himself, but yeah. I thought he would fight up a little bit more of a fight. But I'm confused of why Emmy didn't want another matchup. Why That's not try problem. something else? Now, That's eventually, it. OT, though, he did put Robert Williams on him, and that worked a little bit. But that's a lot better. You know, too far, so, so gone. And then again, no Ennis Canner to try to battle with Mitchell Robinson a little bit. No Juan Hunter Gomez to stretch the floor. I just don't understand, though. <clears throat> So, yeah, it was interesting. They actually went with a nine-man rotation, if I'm not mistaken. I think if you add back Jay Rich and Al, it would put us at an 11-man rotation where the Knicks actually went, you know, 11-12 deep. So, yeah, no Wancho, no Ennis. Um, So that was interesting, especially when you think of Ennis. That would have been a revenge game because he played for New York. Um, But you're absolutely right, and I agree 100%. Ime should have switched up and took a grant off of mr randall a lot sooner because a lot sooner like when they did go to rob he had a lot more success and he should not have left grant out on that island this game was a matter of fatigue man it it just came down to fatigue shout out to you you know your boy who made the comment about rj barrett clamping up that exact same scenario was the same thing from the other year where tatum hit the game winning shot you know remember when rj was guarding him last year and tatum swung it shot it game winner uh, the only difference was he was fatigued. That's why he couldn't even get his legs under him. Tatum missing that wide open shot or, you know, the game winning shot. Uh, Schroeder missing a layup. Brown missing, you know what I mean? So it was just a matter of fatigue, you know. So um, Ime should have made some different adjustments. You would have thought that in a game where it obviously, like I said, came down to uh, conditioning and fatigue first game of yeah. the season, you would have thought he would have gone deeper into the bench. He should have. Yeah, I... I hope he would have. I, I mean, that's the one thing. Again, we'll see back. And obviously, I've seen some people say that's something you do more at like the playoff time. You don't want to touch your bench. But the yes. first game of the season, for your guys to play 47 minutes in a game, doesn't make a lot of sense. And also, I think for me, there's one thing about fatigue. Also, just, you know, mental lapses. You yes. know, some of the switching. Jalen Brown was yelling at Robert Williams for some reason, not stepping up. Big fella, just get over the screen. Randall's not even holding you. Just get over it. And yeah. just bad. They were on the same play, at least the Knicks were. Over and over, the little handoff to Evan Fournier four or five times over. in a row. Yep. And it's like Jalen Brown didn't understand what to do. Yeah, you mentioned it. Dennis Schroeder misses a layup. Jalen Brown could have just laying the ball up or just doing an easy dunk besides a tomahawk it when he's played 45 minutes. You know, <laughs> incredible. Bro. You just I think we're last fine. Week with COVID. Yeah, he did. But now, to be fair, he had a phenomenal game. I can't fault homeboy yes, he did. Tatum not getting any, like, no slack here. Seven of 30 is awful. I'm not with to stop shooting when you're not feeling it. I'm with to continue to shoot. Agreed. But hopefully tonight, speaking of tonight, Celtics, Raptors, he needs a bounce back game. He needs it in a big way. I mean, yes. what are you feeling? What's your score prediction there? I think we smoke Toronto in Same. TD Garden. I think we absolutely blow them out the water. I think that 
if we get out, I know that uh, Jay Rich and Marcus Smart are both probable. They're supposed to play. And then you got Al Horford, who is questionable. But regardless, I think that we're going to beat these boys about 130 to about 118-ish. We're going to smoke them. Scoring. Yeah, I, I see a, a pretty dominant victory. I would be shocked if the bench isn't on the floor, especially for this road or this home game. Yeah. Ennis Kanner should play, I would hope, one plays. I wouldn't be yes. shocked if uh, Jabari Parker, who got waved. People didn't realize that he got waved and actually was brought back on because yes. he plays. So we'll see some more live. I, I think a closer game. I think 120, 117. The Raptors are solid. I think uh, Van Fleet has a decent game, and we'll go from there. Yep. Also from me, we're on to the next topic. I've had a lot of topics on this. I actually think I talked about this on my TikTok page. Follow me on TikTok. I actually thought about this a little bit before. Ben Simmons. No. Ben Simmons has gone back and forth. People have been saying, Ben Simmons, show up to work. It's your duty. You're obligated to work. And it's for my, It's funny for me because I don't think people like real life scenarios. <laughs> and I always love analogies. If you've watched my channel for a long time, I speak in analogies. I talk like an old man. I Everything I say has a scenario and analogy, right? Imagine you not saying, oh, well, I would definitely go to work for a million dollars. You go to Walmart. You don't make a million dollars. Imagine right. you making 15 bucks an hour and you're in the scenario Ben Simmons is. You right. messed up in an aisle and they're saying, oh, my God, you see you see Jimmy over there? He messed up in the aisle. Oh, he's awful. Well, how can we ever succeed? How can we ever get our quarterly bonus with, with Jimmy on our team? Mm -hmm. Would you want to go to work the next day with him? Of course no, you not. wouldn't. You'd look for another place. Yep. The difference between Walmart and the Philadelphia 76ers is Sixers own him. It's an awful yes. thing. Again, it's okay. I don't mean rich white people owning black people. I don't mean that way. Wait, but yeah, they wait, yeah. they own his contract. They own his well, rights. Yeah. They own his rights. While Jimmy at Walmart can just not show up and there's no lawsuit against him. He's not going to lose any money. He can just go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You have the right to go to a better situation. What the Sixers are doing is almost as worse than what the Kings are doing. I don't know if anyone's noticed this because the Kings are way in the West Coast. Marvin they are deciding they don't want to trade him. They don't want to cut them. They don't want to waive them. But they're going to say, hey, you know what's cool? Just stay home. We're going to pay you. But you're not going to play and you're not going to you're not going to get traded. Yep. What kind of bull crap is that? Ben Simmons is asking for a trade, demands a trade. And he's like, you know what? We're going to find you this amount of money. And it's a lot of money. Ben's like, all right, I'm going to come back to work because I'm not losing that much. Comes into work with, it, it's reported his phone was in his pocket. <laughs> now he said it was like a practice jersey was in his pocket. They And he was like, you know what? He's causing ruffles. I, I don't know if you saw this. Ben Simmons said, you know what? I don't want to do this drill. Yep. Doc says, do the drill. I ain't on. doing the drill. All right, dip. We'll see you. And obviously the Sixers responded well. Yep. And they blew out the Pelicans. Yep. Well, Ben, oh Ben. Man, oh man. So 76ers fans, how y'all doing, guys? Rough. Oof. They doing rough. Wee, wee. First off, I mean, in the midst of all that, you got to show them a little bit of love because they did. They smacked New Orleans 117 yeah. to 97. They played Brooklyn tonight, some heavyweights Ooh, fighting. Again. But um, the Ben Simmons is just an absolute travesty, sloppy on all sides, you know. So starting with Ben, to be as gifted as he is and to have that skill set and to pass up that shot, he has the 76ers and all the fans have every right to be upset about that. They have every right to ask him to improve as a ball player and to, you know, do X, Y, or Z, right? Okay. His coach and his players should not have, they should have had the guys back. I understand frustration and being in the moment. If that's how y'all felt, I wouldn't have done the interview and took in the fine. But they can't get on there and then, you know, not have his back when every Trash single him, fan in the world is against him. Every single critic is bashing him. He must have felt like this. And the only people, his teammates, his support, they also kind of turn their back. So, you know, I get the saltiness that he felt. Um, he's already naturally kind of a diva as it is. So then it just kind of got to the point where it seems like he checked out. And I believe the Sixers made an error because if you look back early in the offseason, there was reports of like the Pacers offering them like Brogdon and things along those lines. And they were saying, no, no, no. Um, and then I think, and then eventually now they can't even get that. Now they're asking them like, "Hey, uh, can we get Brogdon and uh, Karis LeVert?" And they're like, "Yeah, no." Did you see what Brogdon just did the other night? He balled out. Imagine having him in Philly. So, I just think it's one of those things now where you've seen Daryl Morey actually just went on the, um, you know, the airways yesterday and was talking about this could be a four-year thing, and we're not going to move them for peanuts and role players. And you know, well, Daryl, you're at a point now. What are you going to continue to do? Like. He's not going to play for you. You have to trade this, man. And there's no way that you're telling me there's got to be something out there. I know I've heard McCollum and, like I said, Brogdon and Wiggins. 
I don't know who he, they can get at this point, but you're saying that like you mentioned um, Sacramento. They, they've been yeah. tied to them this whole time. What about a Buddy Hill, Marvin Bagley, and a bunch of picks? Like at, whatever they have to do, they have to do something. They've got Harrison Barnes there. You couldn't get Buddy Hill, Harrison Barnes, Marvin Bagley, and some first for Ben. They have to find a resolution. They cannot keep drying this out. Every time a Sixers player does a press conference, they're going to have to talk about Ben Simmons. Yeah. Every time Doc does a press conference, talks about Ben Simmons, it's going to be exhausting. And when you have championship aspirations, you have to attack, attack, attack. They would have probably won a title if they did that trade for Harden last year, Harden with Embiid. So sure. they Very have true. to make a trade and do and just move forward. They are already a top seed without Ben. It doesn't matter what y'all plug in there because you're going to get some value and it's going to increase your chances. This is ridiculous. It is. Uh I don't know if I'd go as far as top seed. I think they're a good squad. I don't think they can get out of the East with no Ben Simmons. I would. Do, oh, no, they I, can't. I don't know about that. I don't know about all that. Well, I think Ben still Simmons still up at the top. Like, still at the top. I mean, top three, yeah. top four seed, one hundred percent. I think for me, Ben Simmons is a phenomenal player. And it's just funny how narratives switch and they go back and forth. When people like a player, they'll root for him. Oh my God, Ben Simmons is a great player. I've always thought Ben Simmons is good. Yeah. Got an average of seventeen, six and what, six and six, six and eight. Walking triple double. He's a phenomenal player, and he's one of the best defenders in the league. Yeah, he's good. He doesn't want to shoot. Giannis took a long time for him to finally start shooting. He still airballs day-to-day. -day. He airballed a mid-range from 10 feet away on the, against the Nets. No one cares. Keep keep trying. And I think people want Ben Simmons to try at least just That's to airball here and there. It's just yep. to try. But the Sixer fan to turn his backs on him, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Why not bring back people? It's like, oh... Here in Philly, we want players to just work hard, try hard. I saw Jason Kelsey, the uh, center for the Eagles, was like, oh, yeah, Ben, they actually. love you. They love you if you just tried. Since when is averaging 17 points, being an all-star, being all-NBA, should have won defensive player of the year, not trying. Yeah. Now, why would you want him? If y'all remember, James Harden got his way out of Houston. How? He yeah. went to In-N-Out Burgers and ate him and ate him and ate him, went to Waffle House. Next thing you know, he weighed you know 20 pounds <laughs> over and looked yeah. awful. And guess what? It worked. He got out of, he got out of uh, Houston and went to Brooklyn. Ben Simmons, I'm not saying that he eats a lot of food, but what do you want him to do? Get on the floor and play awful? Yeah. Is Not try, turn the ball over? What was that famous game? Wasn't it Rajah Rondo with the Mavericks who was turning the ball over on purpose? Yeah. He was going backcourt, getting eight-second violations. Yeah. And guess what? Or, Never played again. Exactly. Or what do they want them to do what Jimmy Butler did and show up and cuss everybody out at practice? Is that cuss everybody out? Want to fight him? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, man, I, it's a rough situation. It is, man. They I, both situation. Fought. And they're Keep both holding them. guns on each other, and they're both yeah. hoping the other one folds. Man, it's ridiculous. And obviously, someone's going to fold, and obviously, Ben's the one losing money. He technically folded first. Get your money, big fella. But then they yeah. ended up finding him anyway for missing practice and being, what they call him, disgruntled, or whatever the, the terminology they use. Yep, detrimental to the team, yep. Speaking of detrimental to the team. <laughs> I, dun, 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 I, dun. We're, we're not going to get political, but even if I don't think the vaccine's political, but it, it turned into that somehow, some way. Mr. Kyrie Irving, Kyrie decided, and again, I think I made a video about this a couple of days ago. Actually, it was on TikTok as well. I made a video about Kyrie and his decision on not taking a vaccine, and he plainly said it. I'm not comfortable taking it. You know what? I'm not going to fault you for that. That's the most honest thing Kyrie said yeah. probably in the last five years. I'll be giving it to yeah. him. But I'm cool with that. Absolutely. You are not obligated to, or unless you live in that state, then I guess you are. Now, if the people that say, oh, you shouldn't lose your job because of it, I feel like this, and it's the take that a lot of people have is, we'll find somewhere that would love to have your talents. If you're a cook that your restaurant doesn't want you to take the vaccine, then go find a restaurant that will. Yep. You, you can't sue, it's not discriminate. It doesn't make any sense. Now, for myself, I took the vaccine, I'm happy with it. Kyrie doesn't have the vaccine, and he's yep. cool with it. We're all happy, as long Personal as we beat, choice. If we beat the C word, we're good. That's all I care about. As long as a year from now, that we are good to go and there's no, there's not as many people dying every day. I'm happy. Let's That's just get to matters. that point in life. Now, Kyrie, they sent him home. They said, you know what? We're not going to have you be part-timer. We're not going to have you working at McDonald's here. You can't be working for the Knicks and going somewhere, or Knicks, working for the Nets and going somewhere else. They sent him home. Still mm -hmm. making $17 million. People were calling him, I don't know if you've seen this, Muhammad Ali, stop the cap. I, the vaccine is a personal choice. Going to the Vietnam War is not no personal choice. They were demanding him. He went to jail for three. He lost his boxing license to go stand up what he wanted to do. That, that's, not the, that's not the same as Kyrie Irving saying, well, I'm going to make $17 million and not take the vaccine. That's not the same. 
I'm sorry, bro. People stretching this thing, do what you want to do, but if I don't compare him to Muhammad Ali. That's silly. <laughs> um, oh, Kyrie, Kyrie. I told you, Brooklyn, huh? Y'all were pointing laughing at us when he left Boston. I told you, there's not a worse superstar in the sports than to have than Kyrie. Whoa, whoa, wait, he wait. Is, hold wait, on, hold wait. on. I know, I know you love you some Kyrie. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just finish this because I can already see you over there tingling just because I insulted Kyrie. Wait a minute, Bob. So... What I mean is that every year it's something. You're paying this man thirty million, and he's a superstar. But this year it's the vaccine. I get that's kind of out of his. But last year it was the no call, no call, no show for weeks, you know. And then the year before he was injured. The year before that it was the the promise to Boston about coming back, and then the quitting on them in the playoffs, and just everything. That's it's just always something with Kyrie. I don't understand what it is. And you are right. There was literally protesters in matter in Times Square, you know, supporting Kyrie. So he has his fans out there. But um, look, you're right. He cannot play till he gets the vaccine. And I kind of went with you. Let's trade him. If he can't play there because of their state regulations, trade him. You've got Ben Simmons, who doesn't want to stay there. You've got Kyrie. I already heard they said no to that. But there was another one. I don't know if you've seen this, but it was a three-team trade proposal where um, it was um, the Sixers got picks and Kyle Lowry, the Miami Heat got Kyrie, and the Nets got Ben Simmons and Victor Oladipo. That was a big trade that was going on. I'm sure if you did NBA rumors, you would see it. But that's a, a recent trade, and that's kind of where I'm at. It's, I'm not saying that trade specifically, but mm. – you can tell that the Nets are, they need him. You know what I mean? If you see them go up against the Bucks in the opener, if they have Kyrie, that team is just unstoppable. So if you're able to send him out and get back another superstar, that team probably wins a championship regardless of who you plug in with those two guys. You know, you're talking about two of the best players in the world. So I, I miss seeing Kyrie on the floor. He's a pain in the ass, but at the same time, I mean, his skill set and what he brings to the game. But as a Celtics fan, hey, man, take your time, brother. Stay home as long as you want. You know, I, I didn't know this was going to turn into a bashing Kyrie night. Yeah. Oh, but for some we weird go. reason, a lot <laughs> of Celtics go. fans are very upset with Kyrie. And I don't truly understand it. Again, we just talked about Ben Simmons. You have the right, and Mr. Jimmy, you have the right to go leave a bad situation in your mind to a better situation. You have the right. Kyrie Irving did that same right. Kyrie said, you know what? On July, what day was it? July 15th. You know what? Hey, Boston, if y'all have me, I'll come back. I'll resign. And guess what? Five months later, he's like, you know what? I don't want to be here. What's wrong with that? And also, it's funny. And again, this is how I know. It's like the salty girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't want him, but yet every time Kyrie does something, you're always talking about Kyrie. Oh, y'all see what Kyrie's doing? If you don't care, if you don't want him, then why do you even refer about to Kyrie? I don't understand that part. It's like he's still in our heads. He has us on lock 24-7. Yes, Kyrie's probably the best point guard we've had in years. He's better than Rondo. He's better than Kemba. He was better than Terry Rozier, better than Marcus Smart. Kyrie's a generational talent. It just didn't work out. That's it. Yeah, so a couple things. First off, I mean... He does have every right, and obviously he did it, but giving your word means something, especially when you stand up in front of thousands of people and basically say, hey, if y'all would have me, I would love to come back. And then to have them cater this, everything being built around Kyrie and just how for that entire year, that's a championship team in 2019, and he pretty much destroyed it. So, and it's afterward, it's like he's left, and since he's come back, stepping on the logo, doing his little sage rituals, it's calling the city of Boston racist. Everyone in Boston is racist. Yeah, isn't that true, Katie and Blake? Like, it's just always something with him. And But I would actually say we're not salty because what? we're actually kind of winning. Like, what? We're, Kyrie's not playing, bro. My Celtics uh -oh. are taking the court okay. tonight. Is Kyrie? Uh, okay, to be fair, Kyrie, it's Kyrie is, winning. Everyone in the world is negatively talking about Kyrie. That is true. Every, Everyone is, is talking about the X, Y, and Z. We are doing fine. I would rather Kyrie be on Brooklyn than my Celtics. Okay, if we're talking about the brand, I guess. Kyrie, the player, is deciding not to take the vaccine, getting pressed for days, and still making money. So if that's uh, Kyrie not doing bad, well, let me have that life too. Now, my question is this. People saying they're, we don't care about Kyrie. Man, what? Now, look, and look how the last, what has been, three years... Celtics fans still have Kyrie in their mouth every day. So if this is, and Kyrie asked, if y'all would like to have me back, I'll be back. Does it look like Celtics fans wanted Kyrie? Hell no. 
Not a chance. So it's on. It's our fault he left, you're saying? I'm saying it's a multitude of things, but there's no way you can tell me the reaction Celtics fans had. Would that be what you want? Wow, so y'all like me when I'm there, but when I'm gone, y'all don't root for me no more. Y'all think Cavs fans still boo LeBron James? No. You think Miami fans cheer or boo LeBron? No, they love him. he went back, they were burning his oh, jersey, Miami. What about, what about Miami? Okay, originally, right? And again, Kyrie's not that good of a player. But in Miami, did they burn LeBron jersey? the same thing. If Kyrie came back to Boston after leaving the Nets, I'm sure we wouldn't be burning his jersey either. It's because he's on the team again. I mean, no, no, okay. So, so you're saying that because he's on a different team, people literally we're throw bottles really at his head when he's there on the court. That's the response. The, the response is we get angry Celtics fans like, oh, you left our team. Boo, and let me chuck things at you. Bro, what? But I, I could... How many examples can I pull up of recent people like from different stadiums? There was a college football game where recently they were throwing bottles at people. That's not conclusive to just the Boston Celtics. That happens oh, everywhere. Look it, at what happened in Detroit with Indiana and those fans. Like you can't okay, say that, that is a skirmish. That is you're talking. I think it's the I think it was a Tennessee versus maybe Kentucky game where they were upset about a call. Ole Miss, I think, and they started throwing things at the floor. That's throwing things at the scenery. That the, the whole Madison Palace is crazy. That guy threw a bottle at Kyrie. Not at the Nets, not at the but bench. I'm he saying there's it. a bunch of examples of that. You what could, about this? If you it's, pulled up YouTube, you could see so many examples of we could. dumping dumping stuff on players' heads, players fighting with them. That happens often. There's fighting. There's a difference between having history with a player. The city of Boston, for some weird reason, majority of the fans don't like Kyrie. Even they, they say Kyrie's not a top 10 player. Look at the comment section. Speaking of Kyrie, of the, the 75th anniversary team, People, most of the guys are Celtics fans, don't like Kyrie. Oh, Kyrie's not top 75. Yes, he is. What are y'all talking about? Oh, Kyrie's not better. Yes, he, people have hatred deep rooted because he didn't want to play for the Celtics. But that all of a sudden means he's bad? Well, Bro, what? first I would counter with saying that it's not just Celtics fans that do the voting. So Kyrie not making it is not just based on No, no, on I, mean, I mean people that comment. People that comment on the video. Oh, okay. And I would also say that just because one police officer is bad doesn't mean they're all bad. So just because one Celtics fan threw a bottle at his hand doesn't mean I'm going to do it. So it's hard for you to categorize the entire fan base based off of one asshole that got arrested who's clearly a criminal. So, so I, I, I love that analogy. I love that analogy because I've had debates with this back and forth through my, all my years. Because one cop is bad doesn't mean all cops are bad. But damn, isn't the saying, if you get one bad apple, there might be another one? If you well, get one bad egg, there might be another one? And right. you see more, uh, another bad cops. But what now, guess what? The course of hundreds of thousands of fans? Of course there's going to be let's, let's start with, If you go on Celtic social media, you read the Celtics fan pages, whenever Kyrie has a good game, they're bashing homeboy. Whenever, whenever something goes on, they're always bashing Kyrie. It's not one fan. It's that one fan that had the balls, which honestly, in, in a bad way, to throw something at the guy. So what I about guarantee... fans like me that don't say anything, that don't go onto forums, that aren't making comments? What about the fans that go on that side that really don't give a shit about Kyrie? But you just said, I don't like Kyrie, so this might change my opinion. But I am i didn't bring Kyrie up. You brought him up saying that you believed he should be in the top 75 off of Dame. I had nothing to say about Kyrie. I didn't really care about him. It's not like I'm hating on him. I'm just talking about him because he's in the current news. Why? Because he's a pain in the ass. Like, But I don't sure. have some personal vendetta against Kyrie. We no didn't win a title okay. with him. In fact, no not only did we not win a title with him, we did better when he was not on the court. We, so, we did. That first year we did. I don't, Kyrie is not like, I don't know why. I feel like that's another narrative is that people outside of Boston, it seems like they make this big narrative about this beef and this vendetta. I think it's There's just beef. a natural thing where like you have a little bit of resentment towards somebody that plays a little. on a competitive team. Like a I'm little. going to go against him, but I don't have like Kyrie, like a voodoo thing in my <laughs> corner over there, like a shrine set up on Kyrie. But if I see a Nets player, I'm going to boo him. Shit. Uh, in I, New I, York. I'm cool with that, but to say that there's little resentment is a very understatement. And also, it, it kind of hurt. Again, I am a Celtics fan that has a very NBA mind. I'm always in different circuits. I hear different news. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if it's going to break your heart, Celtics fans. Who's in a better position today, the Nets or Celtics? Can you answer that question for me, Jax? Who is in a better, what team is in a better position moving forward, Celtics or Nets? For this year or for the next five years? Ne next five years, who's in a better position? Celtics. How? Because in five years, KD and James Harden will be almost 40 years old, whereas... 40 years? What kind of age? Kevin Durant's 32, 33. Talking about 40 years old. Harden's 30. Kyrie's no, 29. Katie just resigned four years. 
Kevin Durant's older than me, bro, and I am not 30. So Kevin Katie's like 32, 33 years of age. LeBron's what, 36? Oh my Kevin, wait, Durant, Kevin Durant is 33. So yeah. in five years, he'll be turning 39. 39. Okay, so five years, you have a older version of Kevin Durant who would basically be like coming off the bench. You have Kyrie Irving, who's going to be basically 33 years of age. You have Horton, who's going to be, what, 36, 35? So That's a great a, team. And also, let me, keep going. let me keep going real quick. You have Cam Thomas. I don't know if you checked him out. The rookie for the Nets, a stud baller. He can shoot the lights out. You still have all these other veteran players. Ladies and gentlemen, the Celtics robbed the Nets a couple years back, right? And we're saying, oh, my God, the Nets are going to be in turmoil. The Nets are in a position where they're better than the Celtics today. That is because the, of geographical location, Bobby. They are in the s New York. If that was a different state, they wouldn't. That is because I ain't trying to of hear LA, all... New York, Miami. That is why. I ain't trying to hear all that, big fella. I, I, all I heard was that the Celtics own the Nets. We took draft picks away from them for years. We robbed them. We Those fleeced them, whatever. Are... The, the robbery did. of all time. And guess what happened? Somehow, some way, slowly but surely, the Nets, even when they had D'Angelo Russell, made the playoffs. The stars wanted to go to their hometown team. Before that, and they before that, there. before that, yeah, D'Angelo Russell. He was an all-star for that team. People forget about the actual Nets of D. Russell. They had Jared Dudley. Yeah, they, they had, got beat in the first round of the playoffs. They like, played the Sixers. We, we <laughs> lost in the second round to the Bucks. We've also that, had that, three Eastern Conference final runs recently. What are okay, we're, if we're going to talk about that, obviously, you look at the graph, but again, so they got to get better. Slowly you but surely, they got better. Old, hold on. You would take a near 40-year-old Kevin Durant and a near 40-year-old James Harden okay, over Tamar, 40 a 27 years old. and 28-year-old Jalen Brown and Jason I'll Davis. say this. What about this? Wow, wow, maybe a, Bobby, a, come on. What, what about this? And answer, about? answer this question for me. Next five years, including this season. So next five seasons. Who's going to win more championships in the next five years? Forget who will be better at year five. I would hope if 27-year-old Tate Tate is not better than 40-year-old KD, that there's a problem. How so many titles would difference. the Celtics win? That's no, 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 difference. no, 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 no. You can't, Bobby. You can't rephrase questions to fit narratives, brother. If you're saying, and, if I'm talking about five years later, that means if you're going five years from now, I think that when that fifth year hits, the Celtics will be. But in the meantime, obviously, the Nets are better so, for the next so, two to three years. Yes. No, no, I, next five years. Next five years. I believe the Nets will win at least one, and it might be this year. And obviously, Kyrie's not even playing, and that's the crazy part. They could win this year, and they don't have Kyrie. The next five years, the Nets probably win two titles. I don't know if the Celtics win one. Do you have confidence in this group of Tatum, Brown, and you, you just mentioned it, New York, LA, Miami, get all the free agents. What free agent flocks to Boston? So if we don't develop one, what are we doing here? It's Tatum, right. Brown, and who? Dennis Schroeder and Marcus Smart. That's a great team compared to Katie, Horton, and it, they draft in Cam Thomas. I, I don't know. Man. Right, well... To, to go on that point, so it, obviously the Nets are stacked. They're built to win right now, so they yeah. are going to probably win more championships now. But I don't. I think people lose sight of the fact that the Celtics are still technically on a rebuild. Like, from that Nets trade, we did that trade with them, and these are our picks now, Tatum, Brown. These men are still only 23, 24. So when they are Kyrie and Harden and KD's age, when they're the 30-year-old, the 29-year-old, they will be the superstars of the league and the idea being just like how brooklyn attracts people because of those stars if you can keep those two together in boston they should attract people you hear rumors of beal you hear rumors of levine like people would want to come play with those two guys if they stay in boston especially as they develop into their prime like think of what jalen's doing right now at 24 you don't think five years from now at 29 he's going to be a top 15 player or tatum's going to be an mvp candidate Jax, let me ask you a question. And I love the question to a question. It's always disrespectful, but it always has purpose behind it. Let me ask you a question. Where did James Harden get drafted to? Okay, see. Okay, see. And Katie was drafted to the same place, or the mm -hmm. Supersonics, but yeah, the Thunder. And then Kyrie was drafted to the Cavaliers, right? All top high draft picks, Kyrie one, Katie two, Harden, I believe was three or four. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but it's weird. How as their players mature and get better over time, they don't stick to their original team. What fantasy land do we live in where Tatum is here the entire year? Like the thought of Tatum leaving when he's 28 is not a reality. Or right. Brown leaves because guess what? You know what? Shaq and Kobe couldn't get together. Right. But so had... Brown and Tatum. So hypotheticals, yes. That, right. To act like Tatum and Brown will stay here their entire careers is very unrealistic. Why? Well, that's why not, I said the idea being is if you can keep these two, if you I can mean, keep them. You, you don't you can't speak on the future. I, I don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Nobody uh, does. 
odds are, if you look in NBA history, odds are players leave. KD oh left. God. KD left his Oklahoma City, where he had success in. Left. LeBron left Cleveland. You can go on and on. Harden left. Well, okay, right. left the Rockets. Of but, course. So most, uh, most most people do leave. You do have the Dames, the Giannis, the, Giannis the Steph, Kobe's. They stick around, but yeah, majority of players do leave. And of course, you know there is a potential that they do leave. You you never know, but. What I do know is that the Celtics are always competitive and they are always a perennial challenger. So if they were to leave, I'm sure in this hypothetical situation, more than likely one of the two would stay. I don't think both would leave. And then hopefully that's they're leaving because you're bringing in something else. But I'm thinking that if this team continues the way they are, God willing, neither one of them leave and they can continue to build around them. Because if they can, you're talking about easily two of the best young players in the league that are just getting into their prime with five years from now it'd be scary to see if they're still together what they're doing if they're still together i i could agree mm -hmm. my fear is the talent is not around them yeah, and i feel like people Jaylen believe brown. that i have a fear that Jalen brown and forgive me celtics fans you know i love you but i my fear is he leaves to go to atlanta um it really is or Utah, uh, just because of his relationship with uh, Mitchell. And obviously, he's a Georgia boy, um, you know, and that's imagine Jalen Brown on that Hawks team with Trey Young and the rest of them boys. They probably, I mean, especially a few years from now when his contract's up. So that's the fear, you know, obviously Tatum, St. Louis, there's no team there. But, um, and by the time his contract's up, Bradley Bealant might be phased out. He's a little older. But, yeah, Brown, I could see, you know what I mean, especially because he's on this whole second Robin fiddle type thing to Tatum, yeah. whereas he just showed in, New in Madison Square Garden he can compete with anyone in the league. You know, I mean, that's a good way to round up because I know we're, we're long in this podcast, but, I mean, I like these little almost an hour-long little podcast know, it, videos. It has been that long? It's, it's been 47 minutes right here. We're already pounding it through. But the last thing I want to talk about really quick is about this Brown and Tatum thing. I had a lot of people, and you mentioned it just now, they're the best young players in the league. Mm -hmm. I, Man, I know they posted that top players on the 25 list. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I don't believe Brown made the list, not if I remember correctly. No, uh, that re that list was silly, though, man. They had the a list was mellow crazy. number one. Yeah, it, it was a very random list. It, my fear is always being, again, if anyone knows me, I'm a very realistic thinker. I think of what is what isn't and what could be. That, that's my thing when I break down lists. Mm -hmm. When I think of the NBA landscape in five years, Luka to me is better than both Tatum and Brown. Now imagine yeah, you give Luka great. a star. Imagine Porzingis, I don't know why I have him on fantasy anyway. Imagine you r <laughs> remove Porzingis and add a superstar. Right. What if Bradley Beal says, Bradley Beal says, forget going to Boston, let me go play with Luka. Yep. And they get a big man and they, they build talent up. That team is a... New Orleans, if Zion could just stay healthy and, and stay off the gumbo, good Lord yeah. Almighty, that team is phenomenal. But yeah, I add one more player. Yeah. You add all these. LaMelo Ball looks like a stud. Yep. Boston is not the market to build around talent. So if the question is, can Tatum and Brown win a title with just them as the main guys? I don't know with those two if we can get out the East. Unless Tatum is leaps and bounds, like he's a top five player, I, I don't know how he beat the Bucs. The Nets currently, I don't know how we beat them. And the Sixers yeah. are really, really good. You're, you're with talking about right Simmons. now, right? Right you're now. About, yeah. Right no. now. Yeah, no. I, I don't see it. No. No, no, no. That's 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 hope and dreams. If you really think that they can beat those teams, they can't. And nobody loves the Celtics, man, as much as me. I want it bad, guys. But, I mean, KD literally almost beat the champs last year by himself. By, by if himself. he wore the right shoe size, he would have sent them <laughs> home. That's facts, dog. I mean, that... That's the best player, arguably, in the world. Offensively, it's not a question. And then you got James Harden, who's insane. And then you got Kyrie, who at some point this year will be playing, guys. This isn't going to, you know, probably be going on all year. But you can't beat the Nets if they're healthy. You can't beat the Bucks, But, you know, Philly's tough. I mean, then you got the Hawks. That's where we're at. We're more in the the, the, the Hawks, Hawks, the, the Bulls, Knicks, the, the Heat. Those. We got to figure it out. But those big three, no, they're not going nowhere, man. And. If you've watched what Giannis did on that opening night, he's shooting shots. Now he's hitting free throws. He is there a scarier player, man? Like my God, bro. But no, man. We um we need some breaks. We need some injuries. We need some things to happen. I think this will be a fun, competitive year. I'm, I mean, it'll be you know an up and down. We'll be right in somewhere in the four or five. You know, maybe three, depending on what happens with Philly and some injuries. But. Mm. You know, I, I'm very curious. I'm very intrigued. This is going to be a much better season than last year. That's for facts.
Final question I have for you, and also for the people in the comment section, is Jason Tatum currently a superstar? And I guess the question is, a superstar, is that a top 10 player? Yeah, what is, what's a superstar? Uh, for what me, I think they're top 10. I think they're top so 10 players the in the definition league. definition of, okay. Because that's, you know, I mean, what is a superstar? That's a yeah. hard. Um, no, if, if it's on a top 10 basis, no. He's, to me, Tatum's probably right around like 12-ish, maybe 13. Um, the top, right outside the top 10. He has an opportunity to step into it. I mean, he's technically an all NBA player already if you go off of the points last year. So yeah. he has that chance this year to take that step. Um, but, you know, we got to see more than what, you know, we've seen from that, that opening night, which we will. Yeah. If he can put up 20 and 11 on a seven for 30, two for 15 night, then, you know, Tatum will be just fine. But I think this is the year he becomes a superstar. He's not a superstar yet. He becomes one this year and can step into the top 10. Yeah, for me, I've always said it, and people ask me a question. I've always said no. If yeah. Tatum can ever average six assists, seven assists, he's a superstar. That will take him to the next level. I mentioned it a little bit in the live stream in my breakdown video. Y'all saw Curry open a night, play awful, but guess what? He had a triple-double, yeah. 10 assists, 10 boards. He'll exactly. impact the game elsewhere. Tatum is not the type of player to impact the game, you know, assist-wise. It's just not who he is. I wish yeah. he could get to that level. When he does, hands down, top 10 player. I'll take him over PG. Jimmy Butler and all those guys. Yo, end of the podcast. Trust the podcast. Interesting one. Got a little heated there in the middle. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. I'll definitely add some chapters down below so you can skip. I'm pretty sure I can add this to Anchor and maybe even Spotify a little bit. Hey, we're out of here. Jags, any final thoughts? Are we... Guys, if y'all made it to the end of this, I want to say on behalf of both of us, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate 100%. it more than you know. Listen, don't be too hard on Bobby. Bobby is the <laughs> man. He is, I've literally, he's been with me from day one on this YouTube journey. The man is always available. He helps me in behind the scenes more than anyone else. And don't fault him. He is a Celtics fan, even though he does not have one Celtics picture behind him. You know him. what? You know, I have nothing part. else, guys. I love all of you. Go Celtics. Let's get a dub tonight. Appreciate y'all. Uh, live stream tonight, probably. Let me know. I might see that Dunes movie. The new new Dunes movie was Zendaya. My girl Zendaya in a movie. But hey, we're out of here. Peace out. We'll be back next week for another podcast. Appreciate y'all. All right, guys.